Hello and welcome to Cataclysm University. My name is Vormithrax and this is course number 10 where we will be learning about the clothing and armor layering system. So in Cataclysm there are a very large number of clothing and armor pieces and understanding how, when, and why to equip them and what the effects of doing so might be is very important to know. So you can open your inventory screen and you can always see items worn to the right here. And that's just a basic list showing you what you're wearing in the various letters that are applied to those items locations. Doesn't provide much information beyond that. So the next thing to know is in your invent or your character selection screen, you have an encumbrance and warmth section. And if we tab over to it, you can see the various locations on your body. And this column here indicates the total encumbrance that is encountered for each location. So our torso has a total of 39 encumbrance and our arms have 29 encumbrance total. And I'll explain what the numbers mean specifically here in just a moment. And then this final column is warmth, showing you how warm or cold that particular body location is based on your clothing. So positive numbers are warmer, negative numbers are colder obviously, and you want to be careful with the color coding. Green means it's acceptable range. You can survive without any negative effects. If it switches to a yellow color, that's kind of a warning saying you might start to see, if, for example, if it's too cold, uh, that you get chilly and then you start to get frost nip and then frost bite. Um, and red means do something about it really, really quickly because something very bad is going to be happening either in either direction, either too hot or too cold. So part of the survival mechanism in the game is dealing with the changes in temperature um, depending on the environment and the season that you're in could be warmer or colder and you're going to find that you're going to have to switch out what kind of clothing and armor you're wearing based on your local environment um, and what kind of the temperature it, there is there so that's what you can learn from your screen here on your character selection now the other thing i want to note is in addition to this section here, whatever body part you've got selected will show you specific details that are a consequence of these values. So with our torso having 39 total encumbrance, you can see that our melee attack rolls are suffering a minus 39% penalty. So it is harder for us to hit um, accurately with melee attacks. Our dodge skill is lowered by three points. Swimming costs plus 240 movement points. Melee and thrown attacks also cost an additional plus 39 movement points. So you can see the progression. 39 encumbrance equals a negative 39 and plus 39 for attack rolls and movement points respectively. Um, so it's important to understand these numbers and what they represent. So when we go to the arms, it tells you arm encumbrance affects stamina cost of melee attacks and accuracy with ranged weapons. No, I don't know why it doesn't give you the specific percentages on this particular body location versus the torso. Uh, feel free to bring it up in the forums for the game. Uh, and maybe the guys developing it will throw those numbers in there. It might be hidden for a reason. I'm not sure. Um, but that's what the numbers represent, and depending on what body part you're checking, you can get specifics. So the legs, again, show you specific issues with any movement point costs. So with five, we've got plus one movement point for running, plus 25 for swimming, and dodging skill is lowered slightly because of the five encumbrance we've got currently. Again, it's color-coded. Gray, not too bad. Yellow, you can live with. Just be aware of what negatives you're accumulating and how to compensate for them. And red would be, hey, you really probably want to pay attention to this because you're getting some serious negative uh, modifiers on your stats. All right, so that's the standard ways to look at some of that information. Now, there is a specific screen we're going to go to, the inventory or clothing management. This is the, it's called the sort armor screen officially here, I guess. Um, you get to it by using the plus key. That will bring that screen up. And I'm going to talk about how to use the screen, what the different sections, information, and hotkeys and such are. I'm not going to go into a detailed breakdown of the million different pieces of clothing, when, why, how, and where you should use them all, and what combinations. There is no one answer answers all the questions type of situation or is best for all situations. So you're going to have to play with the various pieces of clothing and make your own decisions in regards to how you're going to use all this. But I want to make sure you know what the information means and how to manipulate the various screens. So in the sort armor screen, it's divided into some sections. This first section currently is showing all armor in this column. 
Then we've got a specific detail section for whatever is currently highlighted. So you can see these little gold arrows here showing we've got the pants selected. If I move to the emergency jacket, this updates. Now it is showing the specifics on the emergency jacket and its different properties and protection values. The backpack, the blazer, and so on. So this is showing you specifically what you've got selected. Notice in addition, this section is going to highlight what particular location that item is actually affecting. So our pair of dress shoes is only affecting our feet, but if I go up to the blazer, you can see it's affecting our torso and our arm location both. Okay, and then this section over here is kind of an overall guide showing the various locations, torso, head, eyes, mouth, arms, hands, legs, and feet, and then what particular items are affecting that category. So torso, you can see the blazer listed, and arms, you can also see the blazer listed. So that's kind of a quick reference you can glance at just to see, hey, I've got uh, a number of items on my torso, but I have nothing on my head, my eyes, or my mouth. Several items on my arms, but I don't have anything on my hands. So I might want to pay attention to that and say, all right, I need to get some gloves, or I need to get a hat, or some glasses, and so on, just by glancing at this really quickly. All right, so back to this side of the screen. You can sort armor either by all, or you can use the arrow keys to move to the specific locations. The torso, head, eyes, mouth, arm, left arm, right arm, left hand, right hand, left leg, right leg, and then left foot, right foot. And then it repeats back to the all command. Um, so the reason you're going to do this is so that you can pay attention to a particular location. Like if you only care about your torso, you can switch that filter over to the torso, and then you can address the specific items in that particular category. All right, so the next thing to talk about is this information over here and what it represents. So let's go ahead and just use the emergency jacket as an example. You can see here it takes up 0.5 liters of storage space. Then it shows the properties. Coverage indicates the percentage chance that if that item is or that location is hit, that this item will actually provide its defensive values against that attack. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say a zombie strikes you. The game decides that it's going to hit you in the torso. It does. It rolls some dice to hit you first. If it succeeds, then it checks this location, your torso, and it starts to go through the various items in the location and checks the coverage value. It rolls percentage dice, a roll of 1 to 90, and the item is going to provide its benefit or its coverage protection for that location. If it rolled 91 to 100, then it would bypass that protection factor. So if you're wearing an emergency jacket, maybe your wrists are exposed, the jacket arms don't go all the way down, or the neck area is exposed um, where it's open. And so possibly the zombie has a chance of getting through that jacket's protection. So there's a 10% chance essentially that any hit that comes to the torso location is going to bypass the two points of bash protection and the two points of cut protection. So it's very important to check the coverage number for any item you're about to equip. You could have a 100 bash, 100 cut protection, but if the coverage is only 1, that means only 1% of the time are you going to receive those benefits. So you got to carefully weigh the coverage versus the protection factors, because some items might only have 50% coverage but provide high protection values. And if you don't know how that coverage mechanic works, You'll be equipping something that has 9 bash, 9 cut, thinking you're heavily protected, but if the coverage is only 25%, you're only going to receive those high protection values 25% of the hits that actually come into that location. So, be aware. Coverage is very important to understand how it works. Alright, encumbrance. Encumbrance is higher is worse, so the more encumbering an object is, the worse the effects are going to be for your encumbrance values and how they affect your statistics and your movement and your action points and your to hit rolls and so on. So encumbrance is a very important thing you're going to be juggling constantly to try to find a happy medium between protection, warmth, and the other factors. All right, warmth is pretty straightforward for the most part. I mean, this particular jacket, the emergency jacket, provides 25 points of warmth to the torso location that we're currently viewing. 
So you can see here our torso is at plus 24 warmth, meaning we're just fine. We're nice and cozy in our emergency jacket. If we took off this jacket, we would lose that 25 warmth, and this would go to minus 1, which would still be okay. It's not bad, um, but it's a factor to consider. So between warmth, coverage, encumbrance, these are all factors that are important in determining what clothing you're going to wear in which locations. And it'll be a constant juggling act as you move items around and try to play clothing Tetris to get the best coverage with the optimal warmth factor that provides the most protection and maybe some storage factors as well. So there's just so much variety and so many items in the game that you'll be playing this puzzle game for a while trying to find everything you want on the various locations. Alright, so next is protection factor. Fairly straightforward. Um, bash and cut are the primary damage types and you've got different ratings for protection. So different items and pieces of armor will have various ratings. Higher is better. So the higher the number, the more protection or damage it's going to stop if a hit does land at that location. So if a hit is determined to come into the torso, it's going to check first to see if the coverage for an item is going to block the hit. If it does fall within the coverage value, then it applies basically this against the damage to try to mitigate or uh, block damage up to that number. So you can see situations where if you can provide high protection value to certain body areas, you can become effectively immune to damage up to a certain number. Um, and I'll let you experiment and figure out just what kind of numbers you need in various locations against various damage types, but uh, just know that the higher the value, the better. And then environmental is kind of a catch-all for a number of different possibilities for uh, fire and things like that, um, acid and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's also an important factor for specific situations. Now you'll notice there's also some info here. This is worn over your other clothes. It has a hood and it has pockets. So it's got a little bit of storage that by wielding it or wearing it, you're gaining 0.5 liters of storage uh, space. Um, it has a hood, which means you can actually activate the hood to have it affect your head location as well. Um, so this is an important area to look at. And if you watch that area as I move down, you'll see that there are differences between the items. So this says worn over your other clothes, this says backpack, and that leads me to the next topic. So there are actually four, actually I think there's a total of five different locations, um, or what they're called layers, on your body. There's next to the skin, which is typically uh, your tight underclothing, um, underwear, or uh, like a wetsuit, things like that, things that are very, very close uh, conforming to your skin. Then there's tight around the waist, there's the default layer, which is just standard clothes like shirts and pants. Then there's strapped onto you, as well as worn over your other clothes. So you'll see the jacket falls into the over your other clothes category. The backpack is one of the strapped items. The blazer is a standard item. It just, we'll just say it fits you well. Um, the fits you well means that it's a fitted clothing piece, but... Uh, since it doesn't say one of the other options in this screen, it means it's on the standard layer. And the same with the dress shirt. Now, the reason I mention this is because if you look here, these plus values for the encumbrance are coming from the fact that you have multiple items belonging to the same layer equipped in the same section. So you have your torso section. The blazer and the dress shirt are basically the same kind of an item. It's like wearing two shirts at the same time, essentially. So because you have two items on the same layer, you're receiving an encumbrance penalty. Now, plus two is the minimum or default number that it's going to add. That can actually be higher if it's a particularly large or bulky type of an item. So multiple backpacks, for example, you'll see this number balloon and skyrocket to a pretty big number. So let's, for example, pick up this duffel bag and let's wear the duffel bag and watch what happens. So when we go back to the clothing layering screens and to the torso section, we've now added a duffel bag, which is strapped to you, which is going to conflict with the backpack. So take a look at our numbers now. We've gone, and it's red, telling you, hey, emergency, pay attention to this. We're now at, what, 79 total encumbrance, 67 base, which is just the... 
uh, encumbrance value of each item added up and then an additional 12 point penalty because we have multiple items causing uh, additional negatives. So we've got a duffel bag and the backpack conflicting and we've also got the blazer and the dress shirt conflicting. The blazer and the dress shirt were just adding two because of the conflict but the duffel bag and backpack it jumped up to plus 12 because they're much larger and bulkier items. So be aware of that. You don't generally if you can manage it, you don't generally want to have multiple items belonging to the same layer or a particular section of armor. So having a backpack and a duffel bag is possible and it's good because now all of a sudden we've got 42 volume. So if I know I'm in a completely safe area with no monsters coming, I might say, hey, I'm just going to stack myself up with backpacks and duffel bags so I can carry out all this loot. But you got to be really careful because with that 79 points of encumbrance, your values down here, you're at minus 79% for melee attack rolls, your dodge skill has been trashed, your movement point cost for swimming and melee throw attacks is way higher. So you got pretty severe negative consequences to be aware of. You don't want to get caught by monsters when you're in this kind of a situation. All right, back to the layering screen. So, so in our torso section here, um, that's all important. So you realize that there are those multiple layers and it will usually identify right here which layer that it belongs to. So worn over other clothes, strapped to you, fits you well, which is the standard layer, and then duffel bag strapped to you. Look for things that are matching up. Anytime you see a plus number here, it means you've got something that's got conflicting layers or multiples on the same layer and you want to go check that out. So what your ideal goal is, is to find and equip at least one protective item for each of those layers that I mentioned, but not duplicating layers that provides you adequate warmth for your current environment, the maximum protection value you can manage with your resources, and as much storage as you can manage. So a lot of things you have to juggle and you're going to spend a lot of time looking at the various screens and checking out details in the crafting screen for what kind of clothing, armor you want to equip and wear. It'll take some time, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. But that's how this screen works in general. So now a few more things to know. You'll see here it says innermost and outermost. This is important because when an attack occurs and the game determines which location is going to be struck, it will then check from the outermost item to the innermost item to see what is going to be damaged or bypassed first. So you generally want to make sure your toughest or most protecting items are towards the outermost end or the bottom of the list. So I'm going to drop the duffel bag real quick. All right. We'll go back into that screen and I've got these items and so let's say I really really don't want my backpack to get chopped up by a zombie who's attacking me or even worse a skeleton they tend to just punch right through with their little bony fingers and tear apart clothing pretty quickly so I want to protect my backpack at the expense of anything else I might be wearing so the way you do that is you can highlight the item press the enter key to select it and you'll see it indented slightly now when you move your arrow keys, you'll see the backpack changes location on the list. And I want it to the innermost portion of this list. I'm going to put the emergency jacket down at the bottom. And then these two I don't really care about. So the emergency jacket is providing me two bash and two cut. The dress shirt's one and one. The blazer's three and three. Let's go ahead and move it down a notch. Actually, let's move that to the bottom. So three and three, two and two, one and one, and then even though the backpack's two and two, I want to protect it. I want to make sure it doesn't get cut up and then destroyed because they're rare and I need my storage capacity, so I want it protected. So I've snuggled it to the innermost listing and I've got the blazer on the outermost. So anytime an attack occurs and the game starts checking the location, damage is rolled and it's going to check the blazer first. It's going to say, all right, it's 85 coverage. It rolls percentage dice. If it rolls one to 85, then it says, all right, three points of damage are now going to be blocked by this particular location. And it will also check to see if that if that item is damaged. So it loses durability or hit points for the blazer. It may or may not, depending. I don't know the exact math on that part of it, but uh, it'll check the blazer first. 
If more damage is done than the blazer can block, it moves to the next layer and it does the check again. So it's going to roll the dice, see if the coverage is going to be a factor, and then it will apply the protection value. Then it moves in another layer and so on. So that's why it's important to have any items you want protected on the innermost or top of the list, your heavy protection value items at the bottom of the list. So they get hit first and then it works its way inward towards your more valuable items. Now. If the coverage for an item is 5, meaning 5% of the time, it's almost never going to get hit, so it's not going to matter all that much where it's positioned. Um, or maybe 1 or even 0, I think some items have, like decorative items. So you don't really have to worry about the positioning of those. But anything that you're worried about being damaged and lost, you want to position accordingly. So this is different from the layering system I spoke about earlier regarding the next to the skin, tied around the waist, and strapped, and so on. So they're kind of two different systems you got to balance, um, but it's important to know how to organize or sort this list from outermost to innermost. This side over here that shows your, all your locations has a similar setup, so it's always going to show innermost items at the top and outermost at the bottom. So as you change the order here, this gets updated. So when I come into this screen, usually this is what I look at first. I say, okay, I've got four items on my torso. I can see how much encumbrance they're creating. And I've got my heavy damage stopping stuff at the bottom. And I've got my backpack protected at the top. And what I'm looking for when I come here is, all right, I need something for my head. I need something for my hands. Or I might uh, notice that I don't have a decent pair of heavy armor shoes or whatever. So I quick glance here. Then I switch over to here move to the particular location I want to address, and then make whatever adjustments. Alright, so there's a couple other quick things to know about. You can unequip or equip from this screen as well. So by that, what I mean is, let's grab the duffel bag again, go back into here. Um, let's say I know I have something in my inventory that I want to equip. I don't need to back out of this screen. You can just hit the E key, and it'll bring up the inventory listing for any items that can be worn, and you can just equip right from this screen. You can also unequip from this screen, so you can use the U key to unequip and say, yes, remove that item. Oops. All right, and it did remove it. So that is a way to add or remove worn clothing directly from this screen without having to back out into other inventory management screens. Um, in addition to that, I think that covers most of it. Now, notice there is a help screen for this as well. So you can go to F1. And that'll, oops, I can't use the mouse while I bring this up. But you can see the various choices here. It tells you how to navigate around the various screens, what some of the encumbrance and warmth numbers mean. So it's a good quick reference. You can also use the R key to assign special inventory letters to clothing. So we covered uh, reassigning inventory letters in another episode, but this is another way to do it for worn items specifically. You can use C to change the side that an item's carried on or worn. So for example, if you have an ankle holster on your right leg, but you want it on your left leg, you can just highlight that and then press C and it'll swap which side that it's on. Uh, you can equip and remove the armor pieces and such. So most of these types of screens have this F1 menu or a, you use the question mark to go to a help section. So take advantage of that. But I think that will give you most of the information that you need to understand and know how to navigate this screen. So millions of different items, not literally, but <laughs> many, many items in the game. So it's up to you to learn how to balance these and what you have access to. But I think that will give you enough information to get the job done. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed the course, and if you have any questions about this particular course or any of them that we cover in the university, feel free to ask in the Discord channel that I've got linked down below. I have all my other social media contacts there as well. It would help the channel and me greatly if you would sign up, like, uh, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff to my various channels and uh, platforms, so that helps me out on each of those. Um, helps the channel grow and helps the metrics for viewability here on YouTube especially. So please do take advantage of those and I hope to see you in future courses. Have a good day and a good cataclysm. Bye bye.